Hi, good afternoon and welcome to the Lightning Tools webinar on the Form Designer Suite. I'm Brett Lonsdale and uh, this week we're going to be taking a look at three different products. We're going to have a look at Lightning Forms, we're also going to have a look at Lightning List Actions and the Document Generator which together form the Form Designer Suite. So before we get into that, let's just take a look at who we are and uh, we'll then be able to jump into each of those products. We'll have a good overview of those for anybody that is new to the products, but towards the end of this webinar, we're also going to have a look at what's brand new in this release of Lightning Forms as well. So first of all, uh, Lightning Tools, we're a company, we're based in the UK. We also have a US office as well. And for the last 15 years, we've been providing different products for Microsoft SharePoint. And of course, that was SharePoint on-premises back then, and we've evolved those to SharePoint Online and, of course, also Microsoft Teams. So products in our portfolio include things like permissions management. Uh, we also have content aggregation and reporting, which pairs really well with the Form Designer Suite. Uh, we also have discussion boards for Teams and also for SharePoint. We have data integration and visualization. And, of course, the three products we're going to be taking a look at today, which is the Lightning Forms, Lightning List Actions, and the Document Generator. So those three products uh, form the Form Designer Suite, and what we're going to be using them for is to build today a risk assessment form in Microsoft SharePoint. So of course, you could use this for all sorts of different reasons. You could use it for purchase orders, for uh, recruitment, you could use it for expense claims, uh, etc. Uh, but today, uh, we're going to have a look at the risk assessment form design and how we can transition some custom lists into a business solution for everybody to use inside your organization. So we're going to use Lightning Forms to really build that, that business form. So we're going to have uh, two custom lists, in fact. Um, it's going to be a very sort of basic um, scenario to get the point across. Uh, but basically, we'll have two different lists. One of them is the main form, and the other one is going to be a sublist. So we can create a project, if you like, or a plan. And uh, with inside that project, we'll have risks associated with it. And those risks are all going to be inside a separate list that is embedded on the same form. And we'll provide a layout that's wider. We'll have multiple columns. We'll also have some business logic added into that as well. And uh, we'll also create some actions so that we can automate some of the different processes that take place in a risk assessment form. We're then going to jump into list actions. And where Lightning list actions resides is on the command bar inside the list itself. So if you want to bulk update multiple items, such as approve multiple items or contact the project uh, manager for each of these different projects, etc. Uh, then Lightning List Actions is something that you can easily build a button on the command bar inside a list, and you have a series of different actions that you can string together uh, in order to be able to uh, apply automation to multiple selected items. We're then going to be taking a look at one particular action, which is an add on to the two products. You can use it with Lightning Forms or list actions, or of course both. And the document generator allows you to take the content from a SharePoint list item and to be able to display that inside a Word document. And the advantages of doing that mean that you can actually share that document. So if it is, for example, a purchase order form uh, that you are filling out inside of a SharePoint list, the vendor that is the uh, supplier uh, to you, they may want a copy of that form. So rather than sending them a screenshot or printing the screen uh, etc we can actually generate a document that could be shared with them and uh, that could be generated and stored inside a document library and then emailed to the vendor uh, dynamically or you could also uh, just simply open that up that file and then attach that in an email or also save it out as a pdf if you wanted to as well so Lightning Forms, what we're going to use that product for for today, and what you could use that product for, is to, uh, to first of all, contextually redesign the look and feel of your forms. So when you use a standard SharePoint list form, you get the modern side panel nowadays, and that is just a consecutive list of different fields that's in the order that you created them in. Um, so what we're going to do with Lightning Forms is basically have the uh, advantage of being able to change that order using drag and drop. We can drag and drop into multiple columns. We can also organize fields into different tabs if we want to as well. So for example, if we had shipping information on a purchase order, it'd be great to have all of those shipping address fields grouped together in one tab uh, called ship to details. And uh, people are always going to be able to find that easily then going forwards. So we could use tabs. We can also add business logic in the form of calculations, functions, and if you want to, also JavaScript as well. Um, so we make that very easy to do. Uh, so uh, you've got simple templates that you can use inside our expression builder to build out concatenations and so on, or to build calculations using the assignment tab. And if you wanted to get into some JavaScript, uh, of course, you could do that as well. 
You can also use Lightning Forms to apply styling to your form, uh, so you can keep this tasteful. Uh, we can work with inside the theme elements in order to be able to apply styling that goes with the SharePoint theme that you've selected. Um, and we can also apply conditional formatting as well. So if you wanted something to, to highlight, uh, for example, if we've gone over budget or the risk in this case is too high, uh, then that could change the color of fields to, uh, to red or something along those lines. And uh, finally, uh, we'll also take a look at actions that you can add to, uh, to create that automation into your form that we mentioned. So these could be floating action buttons on your form. They can also be command bar actions inside your form alongside the save and cancel button. Or you can also add form actions as well. So form actions will help you to set default values to also control the flow of the form, such as navigating to certain tabs on the form uh, when that form is opened. So we then jump into the list actions and with the list actions we're going to uh, build out an approval mechanism so we can go through and select multiple projects that uh, we've identified risks for and then we want to be able to approve all of those in one go. So we'll, we'll use a series of actions to do that such as sending email, updating field values, uh, notifying of status changes and so on and uh, we can also control the access to that list action because of course you don't want everybody clicking on an approve button just if they've got read access to the list. Uh, so we want to make sure that that person is an approver and if they are an approver then they can see the button and uh, of course be able to click that. And as I mentioned the document generator will also form part of this solution and what we're going to do with that is to basically take that SharePoint list item to take the risk assessment form that's been completed inside the SharePoint to, be able to generate a document from it and then we can email that out or print it and uh, keep a copy of it. So the form is going to look like this. Um, you can see it looks very different to a standard SharePoint list form. Um, so first of all, I'll point out some of the changes we're going to implement. You'll notice, first of all, the form is larger than it usually is. So rather than being half the size of this one and just being a, a long series of different fields, we've got some width to work with. And that allows me to have multiple tabs with multiple columns side by side and also to be able to house that sub list on the form as well. You'll also, uh, if you're already a Lightning Forms customer, uh, you may be thinking, how did you get that conditional formatting into the sublist? So that's one of the new announcements today. We'll, uh, we now work with the formatting or the column formatting that you might have inside your SharePoint lists, and we can bring that into the read form or the display form when you're building out your, your SharePoint list forms as well. So um, we've also got the, uh, of course, the, the layout. Uh, There's a responsive layout. We've got some actions in here, such as the approve button. Uh, we've also got some calculations going on inside this form too. Uh, so working out the score based on the probability and the impact uh, assessment, and uh, and also rolling some of that information up too. And we could also do some validation, um, show or hide fields, and also uh, use some filters to generate cascading lookups uh, too with inside our form. So let's jump into it. Let's take a look. So uh, I'm going to open up, first of all, SharePoint. And these are the two lists that we're going to be working with. So we've got the project risk assessment form uh, or, or project risk assessment list. And I've also got the risks identified as well. So uh, the first one here, if I hit new, it's a custom list. We've got a series of different fields. And as I mentioned, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing some scrolling up and down uh, in order to be able to see those fields. Now, in this particular example, it's proof of concept, so there's not that many fields. You'll have way more if you were to build a proper project risk assessment form. Uh, but these are the uh, the ones that we want to work with. Uh, so there's not too much scrolling we need to do, but you'll see that using Lightning Forms, we can go through and apply a much better layout um, to those fields to make it more intuitive to use. The risks identified, uh, there's basically just a few uh, fields on here. So we've got the uh, risk description, the project phase, the impact description, probability and impact, and that will calculate score. Um, and then we can also add a plan against all of that as well and, uh, and also record the, the status. So that's what we're going to be working with there, but we're going to embed this on the project risk assessment form. Now you'll notice to open up the form designer, we just hit the lightning forms button at the very top. That's not going to be there for everybody. You need to have owner rights to the site in order to be able to open up Lightning Forms. So you will design the form as the site owner and then anybody that is a member or a reader uh, will of course be able to use your form uh, that you've created. So here is the new form, the edit form and the display form. Uh, each of them are uncustomized at the moment, but we can go in and customize them by hitting on the customize button. You'll also notice another brand new feature here. If you are a Lightning Forms customer already, um, you may have noticed the plus in the top right hand corner of that button, and that's to add a new form. 
Um, so if we want to have another form alongside the edit form or alongside the display form that may show a subset of different fields or something like that, um, then we can go through and build a purpose-built form for that requirement. And uh, we'll be getting into that as part of the demo as well today. So let's go into the new form, ASPX. We'll customize that. So uh, I'm going to hit the customize button. And as you can see, the design experience opens up contextually. So even though the design panel, if you like, has filled my screen, uh, we're still going to be working within the realms of a panel when we view the, the form. But what we can do, first of all, is just come up to the form settings and we can control the initial size of that form. So we can go smaller than the, uh, the standard form, which we might do if we were building a purpose-built approval form or something like that. Um, medium is the standard size. We can go large. Uh, just like we do at McDonald's, um, or we can also go full screen as well, and uh, and that will be very much as you see it here. It's going to still show the quick launch over on the left hand side for all your other lists and libraries and so on, but uh, it will fill the screen uh, for me rather than display as a panel. There's also some refinements in here as well. Um, so when you uh, view the details pane from within inside the list. Uh, you'll see all of the different fields and you can update those fields from that details pane. So you might decide, especially if you're hiding certain fields based on hide when conditions, to actually show or hide those properties uh, on that details pane. Uh, and that will stop those being rendered, uh, meaning that people can sort of get around the uh, hide when options that you're, you're showing. So we'll go large, we'll hit save. And uh, we'll now have a, a large form when we open it. I'll show you that very shortly. The other things I'm going to do on here is get into adding some other controls. And the first one is fairly basic, but what we're going to do is just add a rich text field at the very top of our form. That allows me to add a title. We could also use it to add instructions onto our form as free text. We can add images or also source code as well. So in this dialogue, you'll notice that there's several different sections. We've got fields that we can add, and they're the fields that belong to the underlying SharePoint list here. Um, so if we'd removed one by hitting the uh, delete button there, uh, we could go through and re-add it again, or we, if we wanted a duplicate of that field for whatever reason, we could also add it again as well, uh, just simply by clicking on the field name. Uh, we can also add additional fields as well. So if you're like me, no matter how well you plan your, your lists and the columns that you're going to want, uh, at some point you'll probably think, oh, I could do with another column for this reason. And uh, Lightning Forms allows you to do that. We can go through and create a new column without actually having to go back to the list and, uh, and adding it through the list settings. As we scroll down, you'll see we've also got a data lookup. And that data lookup is just like a standard SharePoint lookup column, but it also allows me to look up from lists that reside outside of this SharePoint site. So uh, that way we can maintain some centralized uh, lists that are being looked up from uh, with inside our, our solutions as well. And with that, you can also customize the camel uh, using our new uh, camel builder, which we'll uh, also be taking a look at today as well. There's some other controls like tabs, which we'll get into in just a moment. We've got uh, floating actions that we might want to add onto our form, as well as a toolbar and the rich text, which I'll be using very momentarily. And uh, just underneath that is also the lists and libraries that make up uh, this form. And of course, there's going to be some news around sublists and sub libraries as well today that we'll be uh, getting into. So uh, let's first of all add some rich text. I'm going to select the uh, rich text and I'm just going to add a standard title to my form. So uh, we're going to put uh, risk assessment. And what we'll do is highlight that and uh, we'll use the standard styling to make it a heading and I'll center that on the form. So real basic stuff, but notice that we've got full uh, rich text formatting in here. Uh, we can insert images and tables and hyperlinks, etc. And uh, we've also got a source button, which is where you could inject some JavaScript, CSS styling or something like that if you wanted to uh, on your form. <clears throat> So beneath the risk assessment uh, title, we're then going to get into adding some tabs. So uh, as I scroll down, we'll select the tab control and notice that it gives me one tab already. And uh, we're going to add another one just by hitting that plus over on the right hand side. So we've now got two tabs and I'll just add a third by clicking it three times. There we go. So over on the far left, uh, I'm going to configure that tab and we can give that a name. So, uh, so this is going to be our project information tab and we can select an icon so uh, in here we might find a, 
a little information uh, symbol. So I'll go through and select one of those and uh, we'll choose OK. And then the next tab in is going to be our description. So the project description. And what I'll do there is go through and choose a pencil icon. So we've got that set. And the third one here is going to be approval. So we can go through and check out the approval status. And uh, I'll just select an icon for that one as well. So that's just going to be the check mark. The thing about the, uh, the approval tab is, of course, we don't want people coming in here, especially on the new form that we're designing, and approving their project straight away. It, you have to be an approver in order to be able to approve the risk assessment form. So what I'm going to do is also just get into this enabled section and we'll hit on the expression builder here and using the expression builder I can create a condition as to when this tab should display. So that condition could be based on one of the fields on this form. Um, that could be my condition. So for example a certain choice is made from, uh, from a choice field or we can also get into some contextual objects as well where we can pick up the page properties, uh, form properties, there's also different functions that we can work with as well. Um, I'm going to work with the user and I'm going to check whether the user is a member of a group and that group is approvers. So this is a SharePoint group. We could also work with uh, Microsoft 365 groups or Azure Active Directory security groups as well if we wanted to. So once I've added that as my expression, uh, that's basically going to disable all of the controls inside this tab if you are not a member of that SharePoint group. OK, so we'll just OK that one. We can also change the layout behind each of these tabs as well. So I want to go to a two column layout for my first project information tab. I'm going to stick with a full single column on the project description since that's going to have a rich text field in there. And on the approval, just because I want to show off some new features in this build, I'm going to show you the one third left or the one third right. So this allows me to have something that's maybe a smaller value such as project ID over on the left and then a larger value like project name over to the right there. OK, so we'll get dragging these controls into the relevant place. So we'll just uh, bring them in. So we've got uh, the project ID, project name and project manager there under the project information. Under project description, we'll add that big rich text field. There we go. And under the approval tab, uh, we could go through and add some of these approval fields like uh, when it was approved, the approval date and so on. And uh, the assessed by, uh, we could also stick those under that project information as well. All right, so we've organized our fields into the tabs. What we're going to get into next, more on layout, is we're going to add a sublist. So as we scroll down the different objects that we can add, uh, we'll find the lists and libraries that make up this site. So in here is the uh, risks identified is the one that I'm after. So I'll go through and select that. And when I do select it, um, we may not be adding a sublist to uh, create a one to many type relationship. We may actually just want to have a list on here for reference purposes. So if it's for reference purposes, you can display all of the items that live inside that list. And if you want to, you could add a camel filter in here so you can control what you want to see whether it's just items or recursive items and items and folders etc uh, you can add order by clauses as well so we can select which columns we want to uh, sort by we can add a where uh, filter as well and uh, we can also choose what fields we want to show and set a row limit for the items that are going to be displayed and you could test that as well uh, against an item once we've created an item we'll be coming in and have a looking at that uh, very shortly. Because I want this to behave like a one-to-many type join, I need to somehow link the sublist to the main risk assessment form. So linking risks identified to risk assessment. The way I do that is by creating a lookup column. So we can create a lookup column by hitting this checkbox, use as a sub item. And if we already have a lookup column, I can choose it. Uh, that gives you the flexibility for creating a lookup column against any one of these fields. So you could decide to look up against the uh, ID uh, for the list item or look up against the title column, etc. 
or you can just have Lightning Forms create you a lookup column as well. So I'm going to create a lookup column and that will go against the ID column uh, for that item. And uh, of course, there's cascade delete options and things like that that you can also set in there too. As we scroll down, you'll also see there's some other command bar settings, uh, which uh, we'll get into shortly. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just hit OK. And that has uh, dropped on the form my risks identified. Uh, so we can go through and start populating that too. OK, um, before we complete this form, I'm just going to add some styling and also some buttons to it as well. So on the styling uh, side of things, we'll add the styling. You'll notice that inside the styling, we can add general styles. So uh, if we wanted to uh, work with fields, for example, or tabs, we can go through and add some styles to that type of control. You can give it a name as well. And uh, as we go through, uh, we can then go through and set what we want that style to be for all of the field elements. Now, people can go a bit crazy, especially when it comes to colors. So um, what you can do here is just basically come down and choose, for example, the, the label associated with each of the different fields. And I could choose a color for my labels. And we could go crazy. We could choose a crazy green if we wanted to. Or um, you will notice above that, we've also got all of the theme colors that are applied to this site currently. Uh, so that allows me to maintain uh, a nice, uh, tasteful look and feel, if you like. So uh, I could go through and choose maybe the blue as opposed to the black. And as we uh, select that and preview it, you'll notice all of my fields have gone blue now. Now, the benefit of doing that is if we change the theme color, those labels are still going to change with the relevant color from that particular theme that we uh, we chose as well. You could also um, increase, of course, the font size and so on too. So we could uh, maybe make that slightly larger uh, for, for the font and we can change all these other different uh, elements uh, too. And you'll notice that it also writes out the CSS. Um, so if you want to change things manually, that's something that you can also do as well. And notice how it is uh, being dynamic. It's just referencing the dark alternative uh, attribute for uh, for the color. OK, so that's applying a general style. But what we might want to do is make certain fields stand out as well on our form, such as the project ID and the project name. So when we come down here to the project ID, uh, we could add a style to that. And when I add a style to the project ID, what I'm going to do is just come down to the uh, field here, the input field, and I'll change the, uh, the border. Um, so we'll, we'll choose a color again and um, we'll make that border slightly thicker and let's just preview that so you can see that that, uh, that border's now been applied uh, to the project ID field and uh, we could collapse this one and go ahead and do the same thing on the project name so that those two fields stand out. Now if I was changing a lot of different elements on this form it would make sense to export that design if I wanted to do it more than once, uh, which we absolutely can do. Uh, but since this is just one little change here, I'm just going to do it manually. Uh, so we've now got that applied to both of those fields. Now we can also do conditional styling. So I'm going to do some conditional styling on the approval tab. So we'll add a style to that. And um, the condition is basically going to be approved is equal to yes. Okay, so we could uh, test that once we've got a list item as well. So we've got approved equals yes, and if approved does equal yes, I'm going to change the border color of the tab, and this time I am going to go uh, to a terrible color green. Uh, let's go with the three pixels for the border, and we could also change the background color as well if we wanted to. Uh, so we could pick a uh, maybe a lighter shade of green or, or something for that too. Um, so as we hit preview, notice how our tab now is really standing out. We know that this is approved. We don't have to go looking for that approval field uh, to know that information. OK, so let's save and close. That's the uh, the styling that we want to do. And you'll notice in the top left, we've got the save and the cancel button. What we're going to do is just uh, go in and change those. Um, so the save button, what I want to do is just make sure that everybody knows that this is not going to do anything other than save. So I'm going to call it save draft. That will allow me to uh, save the risk assessment as I'm still working on it. But when I'm ready to submit it, I want to have a save and submit button. 
So we'll create a save and submit. Uh, we'll choose a more appropriate icon that indicates to the user that it is going to go somewhere. So we'll uh, we'll hit the uh, the send icon there, and we'll configure some actions. So the actions I want to configure first of all is a save. I then want to send an email, and the email I'm going to send from the current user. So we'll go against that user contextual object again and pick up the current user's email address in the from field. And in the to field, I'm going to send it to the project manager. So here's my project manager field, and I'm going to double click onto the email address for that project manager. We could also uh, add a subject in here. So we'll call this new risk assessment. And I could concatenate that as well uh, with the title. So when I go to the, the template here, uh, I could pick up uh, some of the different fields on my form. So I'm going to pick up the, uh, the project name uh, in there didn't need to drop in those uh, square braces. Let's just remove those. There we go. Uh, so we can make that more dynamic. And of course, we can make it dynamic with the content uh, inside the body as well. Um, I'm just going to put dear manager, new risk assessment form for your perusal. OK. And uh, we could also send some attachments if we need to. Uh, there's a fallback uh, send to uh, or sent from email address. And we can also render the message before it also gets sent, giving you the opportunity to be able to go in and modify that email before it goes to. So uh, we've got a save, we've got a, a send email. I'm just going to show a message to the user as well, which is uh, a useful thing to do. So uh, we'll, we'll choose the show message. And this is going to be a status message that just says success, it's going to display for just five seconds and then disappear. Uh, we'll make it a successful color of green. And then in here, we're just going to say risk assessment form is submitted successfully. OK, and that's the uh, the configuration for that one. And uh, once we've uh, we've done that, we could uh, also update fields and so on. You're going to see that in a separate action anyway uh, in just a moment. So I won't do that just now. Uh, so I'm just going to simply go through and close the form. But just to point out that if you wanted to, you could also use variables. Um, so we can get into variables uh, in here, define some variables, and they could be storing results of a calculation that you're going to reference several times throughout these different actions. Uh, we could also add conditions as well or, or loops uh, to our uh, list of different actions also. So that's my save and submit button, uh, which we've now got. And then we could just simply go through and move that up as well. So it's next to our save draft. OK, so now we've done that. Um, I think we're ready to save and close. And because I changed the size of the form, I'm also going to just do a control refresh because the size of the form does get cached in the browser. And now uh, we'll be able to hit new. So there's our, our bigger form, and we can go through and create a risk assessment. So I'm just going to give this a project ID, which I could create dynamically. Uh, so we just call that one for now. Project name, uh, we'll just call this Lightning Forms Release. And the project manager, I will set to myself, and I'll leave everything else for now. We could write a project description, so release Lightning Forms. And down here under the risks identified, uh, we could also go through and add some risk information. So one of the risks might be I forget to upload the package, which I'm not going to do. I'm going to do that tomorrow. And uh, the phase is going to be uh, the release phase. So probability of this happening is fairly low. Um, the impact that it would have is We'll put that as three. Um, so of course, I want to add the calculation on here, but one times three equals three. Uh, so that is the overall score. OK, and uh, we'll just save that one. And that creates for me that impact. And we could just add a, a couple more. So we'll have uh, reference ID number two. Uh, so Lightning Forms won't install. So that's at the installation phase. Users don't get new features. Uh, 
uh, probability of that happening um, is, is maybe very low, so we'll just stick that as one, but the impact could be very high. Um, so there we go, we'll set that to, uh, to be a six as the score. Okay, so we've got our, our list items, and now I can save and submit this. And as I save and submit that, it's going to save the values to the two lists. And you can see here we've got the success message, and now it's going to disappear, and we've got those items collected inside the list. So there's our risks identified with some column formatting going on, um, which uh, we're going to see show up inside the form as well. And we've also got our risk assessment uh, submission as well. Okay, so what I want to do next, uh, you'll notice that when I view uh, one of these items, if I open the item or I edit the item, we're still seeing the original form. So what I'm going to do is go through and export the customization for my new form. So uh, we'll go into the design experience again for the new form and we're going to go to the export import button and we'll choose export form. So you can see that that's exporting out the JSON. We'll save and close. Okay and now we can get into the other two forms. So we'll go into the edit form and we'll hit import, choose the project risk assessment form and notice on here we've uh, got the choice now as to what we want to import. So before this release it would basically import the entire thing. Now the downside to that is you're going to do things on your new form that are specific to a new form, such as the save and submit. Uh, we wouldn't necessarily want a save and submit on our edit form. Uh, we may want to have an update uh, and submit or something like that, or update and notify. But also there's form load actions uh, that uh, may occur which could override some of the values that have been already created on the new form inside the edit form. So now we've got a choice as to what we want to import. You can decide whether you want the general styles to be imported. So I'm going to switch that off just so you can see that. And we've also got things like form controls, uh, form load actions, which we didn't create any. Uh, we've got command bar actions as well and uh, form settings. So I'm going to switch those two off. We want the form settings because that's going to be the size of the form, etc. And now we'll hit uh, yes. So we'll get the form design being applied. And uh, what you'll notice is I've got the styling that was specific to project name and project ID, but the labels on this form are all black because that was a general style uh, that I had created uh, before. Okay, and the uh, command bar there only has a save and cancel, doesn't have the save draft or the save and submit. Okay, so that's the uh, edit form. So let's just save and close that one. And we'll go into the display form and hit lightning forms. Uh, we'll choose customize and we'll do the same thing. So we'll go through and import the uh, form settings and I'll just leave those as they are this time. Okay, so that's going to go through and, uh, and apply uh, all of that for me. And what you'll notice as we, uh, we scroll down, that column formatting that we had inside our sublist has now been carried forward to the display form as well. So that's great when we're opening up a form uh, to, to view the content inside a sublist, we can see the data visualizations coming through from that column formatting so we can make better business decisions. Okay, so um, let's just save and close that. And what we're going to do is get into some more actions now. So uh, what we'll do is go back into our edit form. So we'll choose edit customization. Okay, and in here we're going to add another command bar button. So you've seen how to add the uh, save and submit and so on. Let's do a, an approve. So I'm just going to add an approval button in here. So for that one, we'll just have a little check mark and configure some actions. And what I'm going to do here is choose the set field value. So the field value that I'm going to update is the approved field 
and we're just going to simply set that to yes okay so we can click that button and uh, it will approve it and then we'll do a save form afterwards okay uh, so that's our approval but what we're also going to uh, look at doing is adding that approval not just here inside the main form where we can approve the items but we're go going to also go through and add it uh, inside the list itself so we can bulk approve uh, multiple different projects so the way that we would do that is by using the list actions so as we go into lightning list actions we can add a series of actions here as well so we're going to call this approved projects and once again we could keep some consistency by choosing a similar icon and we can have this run against the current list, which means all of the items in the list, or against uh, a selected single item or against multiple selected items. And we can also set the visibility exp expression as well as to when that should show. So of course, we may want to make sure that you are a member of the approvers group uh, in order to be able to see that. So let's configure some actions. And uh, rather than having an update field that you've just seen, uh, we've got update item and we can go through and choose the project risk assessment list and we need to tell it which item we're going to update so we're going to use the unique identifier for the list item uh, so that will get the current ID from the selected item and then these are all the different fields that we can then update so I'm just going to update that approved to yes and drop that in there okay and uh, what follows on nicely from an update item is the reload so we can add a reload action as well uh, and that means that we should see the uh, item update um, right in front of us okay so let's just go through and create another test item quickly uh, so i just give this a, a project id of two and uh, we'll call this the social squared webinar which is going to be taking place in a couple of weeks and we'll add myself to that uh, so the risk is going to be risk number three. We could, of course, auto increment this. Um, we'll put too many people attend. And that's at the marketing phase. Okay, so probability, we'll put that down as a three with an impact of three, giving us a score of nine. Okay, so, uh, so let's just save that. We've got our new item in here and let's uh, save and submit. Okay, so once again that's been created, but it hasn't yet been approved. So each of these you can see the approval is blank. So what I should be able to do here is uh, is select uh, one or more. I told it to, to just be on, uh, on a selected one item. So notice that I can click this and now that has been set to yes okay so that's how we can go through and use the list actions inside of, of lightning forms and what we're now going to do is just jump back into lightning forms again we're going to edit the customization and this time we're going to use the document generator to create a word document version of this form as well now this is a template that i've already created so i'm just going to open that up and show you how that can be created So what we have here is a Word document. So you can create the Word document however you want that Word document to appear. And you'll notice that inside that Word document, we've got some placeholders. So the placeholders are just how we would use a field name inside an expression inside of Lightning Forms. So they're wrapped with inside the square brackets. It does have to be the uh, underlying name and not the display name. And uh, we can reference each of those fields uh, on our form or on our document. This one here is a loop statement. So it's inside a table and inside the first table row of that word table, we can use a loop statement followed by the name of the sublist. So the sublist is called risks identified and we can then loop through each row that is related to the risk assessment and uh, then end the loop. So that will bring back the multiple items associated with that uh, sublist. So that's what we're gonna upload uh, and uh, what we'll do is go back into Lightning Forms. We'll create an action button. So that action button is going to be called Generate Word Document. 
and we can choose an icon for that as well. So we just go with the word icon and we can then configure the action. So the action that I'm going to use is actually uh, generate document, which is a premium action. And we could upload the uh, template. Um, we do actually already have one that I could, uh, could access or I could just simply upload it again. Uh, so in here, let's just uh, go through and grab my risk assessment doc. Uh, so that already exists, but we're just going to overwrite it. And we could tell it then which item we want this to generate with. So if I'm using Lightning Forms and Generate Document, it's likely that I'm going to run this on the current selected item. But if I'm using Generate Document for multiple items through list actions, I could use this uh, multiple items uh, option as well. So I'll go with a single item. I can choose the list and then the ID and we can then open this in a browser or we could also if we wanted to uh, save it to a document library as well and then I can also get into the template and create a name so I'll go with the um, project ID dot docx as my file name and uh, and that will do uh, let's just okay that OK, again, let's save. Save and close my form. OK, so if we were to go in and edit our first item, uh, we can now generate a Word document. And uh, Notice down here, uh, we've got the Word document generated. And there it is. So we've got the Lightning Forms release. And uh, we've got the uh, two items that we created as well. Uh, from our sub list. Okay, so that's how we can also generate documents uh, using the document generator. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the new features uh, that we could maybe start to apply to this as well. Um, so we've seen list actions here and, and demoed that, and we've seen the document generator and demoed that. Um, what's new in this release? So, first of all, the column and the view formatting that you saw uh, inside the sub list, um, also the ability to bring other parameters across from the sublist as well, such as grouped views and so on, can also be applied. And we've also got uh, tile views within sublibraries too. So let's just bring back SharePoint for a moment. And what we're going to do is just go back into uh, the edit form. And as well as having a sublist, we're going to add a sublibrary. And what we can do is instead of showing just the grid view, uh, we could also show a star view as well. I just chose the wrong one. Uh, just let me remove that. Let's add documents. There we go. So I've got documents added and I've built a new view in there, uh, which is a tile view, uh, the gallery view. So I'll, I'll choose that one. I'm not going to make it a sub library. It's just going to show whatever contents is inside that document library. For that reason, uh, we could actually get into the new modern camel filter builder and uh, we can choose what um, we want to display. So I could set my, my wear condition and, and so on inside of there and we can test run it uh, that will show me what items are going to be returned so in this case it's bringing back those two folders uh, if i wanted it to bring back something else other than those two folders i could create my own camel query um, by just basically setting a rule or a, or a condition in here as well uh, and that will make it very uh, dynamic okay so uh, so that's my uh, library on there now one of the uh, the benefits uh, to this is also that I can drag and drop into that as well. So if I was to once again edit this item, uh, what I'm going to do here is just drag a file and drop that straight into that sublibrary. And you can see how that document then renders uh, inside that tile view as well. So that's a couple of improvements that we've made to the, uh, to the tile view and uh, the sub libraries so also having the drag and drop which you've just seen um, the ability to configure list actions on the command bar as well of a sub list or sub library so what we're going to do here is just jump, jump back in uh, to this time risks identified so this is my uh, my sub list 
and in here let's go through and add a list action so uh, we've actually got uh, markers complete uh, already running on there so we could go through and uh, and configure obviously that so that's going to go through and, and mark those as completed and we could have that show up if we want to also on our sub list so here we'll go into our project risk assessment we'll go into lightning forms and uh, we'll go through and edit the edit form so on here we can uh, change the order of those actions we can edit them and notice that we can also configure uh, list actions as well so there's the mark complete uh, that we can add onto the command bar uh, so we could uh, go through and edit that and show that on our form if we want to uh, as well as changing the order of other buttons as well uh, so we can uh, okay that one that way we will see those uh, buttons coming through on our sub list so once we open up an item and select a row there's our mark complete uh, showing on that particular item which we can of course go through and uh, and click all right so that's the ability to uh, display the command bar uh, with custom list actions uh, on a sub list so the other thing we can do is create a new form uh, as we mentioned at the start of this webinar as well so let's just jump in and take a look at that uh, so from the lightning forms dialog in fact let's just go back yeah we're in the risk assessment so inside the uh, Lightning Forms dialog. If I wanted to have a, a, a specific edit form, maybe just for approval, uh, what I could do is create a new form. Uh, we'll call it approval.aspx. We can go in and customize that one. And this allows me to maybe remove some of the different fields that aren't necessary just for the approval side. So uh, we could uh, delete some of those and we just have approved an approval date uh, showing with maybe the project ID and the project name. Uh, we could make it so that you can't amend those or do whatever we want. And then we could also go through and make this uh, small as well. And save and close that. Now how we would call that uh, is perhaps through a button. Uh, so what we could uh, also do is click onto lightning forms uh, edit the edit form and we can change our approve button so rather than having this uh, go through and set the item directly uh, using the set field value we'll remove that and instead we'll use the open form and using our open form We'll select the list or library and I can now choose the approval.aspx. Uh, we'll have it open up the current ID again. We could open up in a, a small panel form. So we can OK that. Save and close. So now if I was to go in and edit this item, we can just hit the approval button and just simply go through and set approval to yes and the approval date and of course save and close that and uh, you do get that uh, save, save conflict uh, because I've saved via a different form but notice how I can refresh that uh, and that will bring that value through uh, ready for me to save and close this one okay so, uh, so that's that new feature uh, so um, we've also got the new camel builder that you just saw uh, which we can use on sublists, sublibraries, we can also use that on lookup columns as well, uh, and also the get items list action. We have the new column layout options as well, so you saw the third left and uh, the third right uh, configurations, and the import export different sections of the form is new, and the final thing is also the ability to clone objects. So what you'll notice inside the uh, the form design experience is that next to each of the different controls here you've got a copy form element so, uh, so we can go through and copy that and uh, and clone it 
um, so that we can uh, reuse that. So notice you get the little clipboard here uh, inside that dialog that allows me to, uh, to to drop that onto the form again. We can do that with every single field or every button and so on, of course, uh, saving you a tremendous amount of time from uh, configuring those. Okay, so that's everything we have uh, for you today. So we'll uh, open up to some, some questions and uh, we can address those. Uh, but if there is any other questions that uh, you might want to ask about um, beyond this meeting, please feel free to email me on brett at lightningtools.com. Okay, many thanks.